Howdy folks, Sapper here, a.k.a. Sean, and I'm bringing you Labyrinth the Awakening. So I am getting ready to start turn 13, and one thing that I don't normally put on capture on video is uh, the, end of, the end of turn stuff. I don't usually do that, um, but this last end of turn was actually kind of caught me by surprise it wasn't something that i was thinking about and so if we look here polarization that's something that's introduced in the awakening so that's where you can add like your um awakening and reaction tokens so if you look here so it says determine the difference in quantity of awakening and reaction so if the difference is three so let's say we had three awakening and zero reaction then you would move the alignment one box towards the player side. So if it was three more awakening markers, then you would move it towards ally. And if it was the opposite, if you had three more reaction markers, then you'd move it towards adversary. So then if you're already at the edge, which like this one is, then you would change the governance one level. Well, that happened. I had three reaction tokens in Syria the token was already at the edge we were at poor so Syria flips to Islamist rule without a major jihad in that uh, in that country well the bad part about that is well number one we have one more Islamist rule country but if you look right there there were two WMD tokens on Syria. Well, now those go into the plot cup. So, whenever the jihadis do a plot, there's a chance. So, there's six normal tokens, and then there's two WMD tokens. So, now I'm really going to have to do my best to stop any plots because I never know if it's going to be a WMD. And I definitely don't want that happening. So that happened during the end of turn. Um, and just to kind of show you, troops are at uh, low intensity. Jihadi funding is low. So, I mean, those two things right there are in my favor. Um, got the situation over here in uh, Southwest Asia. Or, excuse me, Southeast Asia. Um, this isn't too bad, but it could get worse. We've got a little bit of a struggle going on in Somalia, um, Saudi Arabia. That that might be my next target towards uh, trying to get to good governance. And and a lot of it has to do with just the resource value, right? Like let's let's invest in the as bad as it sounds, right? Let's invest in the places where the resources are going to be more beneficial towards towards us right um egypt is looking pretty good there's a civil war in libya but you know there's militia and troops there so that should be able to this should be able to maintain um so victory conditions looks like we've got three resources each for Islamist and good, fair good countries are at six. Islamist poor countries are at nine. So I think the two decks. So two decks solo. I need to. I need to be here for a U.S. win. Um. What else? I think that's about it. So. I mean, the Islamist rule thing is, okay, now we've got two. At least they're not adjacent, but now we have two, and that's, that's kind of worrying. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how things play out. So let's, let's start with the, uh, the Islamists card play. All right, Peshmerga, Kurdish fighters distract a jihadist. Well, they're not going to distract anything. Because this is the jihadi turn, so what they'll probably end up doing. Um, yeah, that's going to be a plot. That's kind of what I thought it was going to be. So here we go. Here's our first plot of the game. So 
want to figure out where that's going to go. U.S. now with troops. Um, are there cells and troops in the same? No. Pakistan, no. Philippines. I don't think the Philippines. Most active cells. It's not going to be Afghanistan. Well, that points to the Philippines again. So let's let's put that plot in the Philippines. All right. So we'll put that plot in the Philippines. Let's let's see if it actually happens. So we roll one die. Philippines um, governance is fair too, so we got to roll lower than a two. All right, so that plot does not happen. That's good. I accidentally saw it. I didn't say anything. You guys didn't see that because it was off camera. But it was a plot three, so at least it wasn't a WMD plot. All right, so that was their first card. Let's see what happens with their second card. Oop, that one's getting played. ISIL. A new country. Mm -hmm. Place Syria and Iraq into civil war. I don't think we're going to place Syria into civil war because they're already Islamist rule. Oh, here we go. If Islamist rule, good governance, or with more troops plus militia than cells, no change for that country. Minus one prestige. So there we go. I kind of I didn't I didn't read ahead enough, but so Syria that's not going to happen. But Iran goes into civil war. All right. So I think I said Iran. It's actually Iraq. So Iraq is now in civil war. Um, really nothing else happens. I place the marker there. They can auto-recruit. Um, minus one prestige. Not not a surprise. My prestige is down to one. Again, I mean, I, it's it's impossible to, to keep your prestige high. Um, awakening markers would be replaced by an equal number of militia reaction markers if any would be replaced by an equal number of uh, cells so iraq didn't have any of those so basically we just throw on the civil war marker and that was it all right so that is it for the jihadi's turn let's see what we got we have mm, I think I play if there's any country in a civil war with a cell, plus two funding. I don't. Libya and Iraq. So now would be the time to play this card because <laughs> that doesn't happen. There's a whole lot of mess on this card. So the Charlie Ebdo attacks. Um, so basically you roll two dice and depending on what you get on the black die, you can do, I mean, this is an awful card, so I definitely don't want to play that. And let me see. I'm going to grab, let's see, play one of the following if poor. Libya. Libya is poor. Place one seller plus one funding. And if the country is... In Civil War, part of Caliphate, place two cells or plus two funding. Roll for Serbia's posture. So that's definitely, that's, there's a lot of writing on that card. But Libya would be the place to play that because they're at Civil War. If country is in Civil War, part of Caliphate, place two cells or plus two funding. Ugh. I don't think I could do that, though, just because of the... Funding is tight right now, so that probably, let me see, Libya, we can't do that. Um, Algeria, Tunisia, they're not tested. So we'd have to test it. Morocco, Mali, or Nigeria. Nigeria is not poor either. Mal Nigeria... Now, Nigeria is one of these weird cases where you have two different sides, right? So certain events will flip that to the other side. So right now they're not poor. They're just... Actually, they are poor because there's the governance right there. 
All right, let's, I think we'll play Mosul Central Bank. This card would have been great last turn because right here, play in Syria if marked. If ally, remove any available WMDs. I don't think they were ally though, so that's the problem. I, but that would have been great because now, now we have WMDs in the hands of the bad guys. I really could have used that card. If I'd have had that card, I might have tried to get to their governance up higher. So what I think I'll do is I think I'll play that because the event will not trigger. And what do I want to do? Try to do some war of ideas maybe. <sighs> war of ideas is going to be tough for the simple fact my prestige is so low. All right, so after a lot of deliberation, which I did off camera, I think I'm going to play this first. So we're going to try to do some nation building. We're going to do this in Libya. Um, actually, I should do that in Iraq, shouldn't I? Because Iraq has more resources. So play if country is marked with a regime change or civil war. I could do that in Somalia too, but I think place one aid and roll in the war of ideas is that the GWAP penalty is zero. So that's actually going to help. Um, so we're going to play that in Iraq just because I can place an additional aid marker there. So that gives me two. Um, so we're going to try to get the governance. So to end a civil war, you ha it either has to go to Islamist rule or has to go to good governance. That's the only way to end the civil war. So that's a pain in the butt. Um, Iraq is in the center of more things than Somalia or Libya. They have more resources. So that's the reason I'm going to go with Iraq. So GWAP penalty is zero. Um, let's see what else. War of ideas. What other penalties do we have? We're not attempting to shift a good. Prestige is minus one. We have an adjacent good ally. All right, here we go. This is actually going to work. So we get plus one for here, plus two, plus three. So that's plus three. War of Ideas is minus one. GWAP penalty is zero. All right, all right, that'll work. So we're getting a plus two to the die roll. Let me be hopeful about this. Plus two to the die roll. Five. So that is a success. So I think I'm going to flip them. Nope, not to Islamist rule. I definitely don't want to flip them there. I'm going to flip them to fair. So... That was a good thing. And now I could probably, let's see. This card right here, I really don't like. I think this should be for a one op, the, the, for me to get one op point as the US player, because I'll get one op and then I still have to play the results. This, if country isn't, so, because this is what's going to happen. It's going to ha play in Libya. If country is at civil war count that plays two cells or plus two funding and then roll Serbia's posture for just one op point, that's an awful card. That should, I think that should be a little bit higher. I think that should be at least a, a two op card because I'm getting nothing out of it and the jihadis are getting a bunch of stuff. The good thing is, is I drew nine cards and the jihadis drew seven cards. So I basically I get one extra phase. So I could, I could, and I can't get rid of both. I, unfortunately, I can't get rid of both those cards. I don't like either one. That one's the worst of the two. Um... I just don't know what to do. This one's not going to do me any good because there's no caliphate on the map. So I don't, the plus three prestige would be great. 
it would get me to medium, which would in one turn would be back down to low because that's just the way this this has been playing out. Um, I could probably do a war of ideas in Iraq again because not now I only need to use a two op because the governance is at fair. I just need to get to good governance. I get a plus two to the roll. I get plus two. No. God, that card right there is a, that's super, super annoying. Because they're going to get two funding, which will put them back to moderate. So now they're going to have access to those four cells. I don't, I, I don't want them getting access to any more cells than they already have. I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to play this for the op. I think I'm going to try to change one of those countries' postures back to hard so I can get rid of this. Because if I get, because the world is soft right now, if I can get them to there, then there's no penalty. So that will be, I think I'm going to do that. Let's, let's try testing Germany. Let's test Germany, see if we can conduct a war of ideas. Let me double check and make sure I can do that. I'm pretty sure I can do that. So basically, that's just a, a war of ideas. Um, and here's kind of what I'm doing, right? Help GWAT relations gain prestige. So I can I, I target a non-U.S., non-Muslim country, which are basically all the, the European countries. The Philippines, there's some exceptions in Asia, too. Roll on the posture table. If outcome is same as U.S., posture plus one prestige. So... So here's the posture table. So basically, um, I need a five or a six to do that. So let's see what happens. I'm going to try to do that with Germany. I need a five or a six. So let's do the, the, the dice reverse psychology. I need to roll low. Well, I rolled in the middle, so that didn't work. So that's that. Now we go to the jihadis. Let's see what we do. This looks like Israel destroys WMD facilities. That would have been great. See, again, this, this card should have been in my hand last turn because then I could have prevented the, the Syrian stuff. Um, they're probably going to do a plot. We can't do a major jihad. Funding is tight. Um, no, funding's tight, yes, cells available, cells are not available, yeah, it's going to be two plots. All right, so we're going to do two plots, I think we decided that they're going to be in the Philippines. All right. So hold up a minute. Um, if a plot fails, I thought, don't you remove the cell? All right, for some reason, I thought if a plot failed, the cell was... Um, Removed. I not. I don't know if I've been doing that, but according to the rules, a failed plot does not um, remove the cell. So, two plots. I need to roll two or less. So let's see what happens in the Philippines. Thankfully, nothing happens. Let's see what we had. No, nope, no hit. Technically, you're not supposed to look at those, but whatever, because they're going back into the into the plot cup anyway, so there were no WMDs. 
but that's the bad part is now I have to treat every unblocked plot as if it's an, a, if it's a WMD now, and I don't like that. All right, card number card number two: sectarian violence. Movements turn on each other. Remove one awakening or one reaction marker from any country. So. Play one on yes, play event, unassociated yes, add card value to the reserve. So we'll put that there. So basically we're going to remove an awakening marker because we're going to do what's most favorable to the jihadis. Um, We don't necessarily want to do it here because they're at Islamist rule. We want to do it. Let's do it in Iran because remember that convergence thing I was talking about? This will make it easier to will make it easier to sway Iran over to the dark side. Which is not going to be good because there's also a WMD there. So pretty soon I just have this feeling there's going to be WMDs all over the place. Um, that card's super, I don't even want to look at that card right now. It should not be a one-op, I'm telling you, for what, for what it accomplishes. Um, what can I do for two? Let me try... Maybe I'll just do this. Remove one cell from a Sunni country or two cells from a Shia mix. Which Shia mix again? Shia mix is the green. So it's these. I think I might do that. Because then that way... Because I'm going to end up playing this card. And the funding is going to go up. And I think I'll do that. I'll remove two cells from a Shia mix. Um, we have two in Syria, we have two in Afghanistan. Those are the only places that I can really hit. Let's remove them from Afghanistan. And I think I'll use my one op this, and I don't want to use it. I think this is garbage again. Um, so actually, there's a way. There's kind of a, can I remove a cell any other way? I don't think I can. That stinks. If I could remove one more cell. Yeah, it sucks. If I could remove one more cell, then I could add the two cells rather than the increase of funding, which would... Because I'm here. I don't want to increase funding because then I'll go to here, which will make all those cells available. Uh... Maybe I should... Uh... I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. All right, I think I'm, I'm going to play this. I'm going to use it for the um, reserves. So I'm going to give myself two reserves, and let's see what happens as far as the roll goes. So four and four. So we're going to place a two plot in the Benelux. If it's, oh, hold on. If it is, and place the following in that result, if hard. If unplayable, use highest number playable result. Cells are placed active side up. The Benelux, the Benelux is hard, so I will place a two plot in there, so. All right. So I have a terror plot in the Benelux. I don't understand how that works. There's no cells there, so how does that work? 
What are our other choices? Because I think I'm going to have to, I would have to play it in a place with a cell. United States doesn't have a cell. Canada does not. United Kingdom, Benelux, France, any hard Schengen country. I don't think there are. So you know what? I think I just got over. Yep. I can't, we can't, can't meet those requirements. There are no hard Schengen countries. So goodbye, terror plot. Um, so let's put you there. I've got my two reserves now. That was my first card. I think I will use one of those ops from that reserve to do another attempted um, posture shift for Germany again. So I think I need a four or a five or a six, I believe. Yeah, I need a five or a six. Roll low, roll low. There we go. There we go. Got a five. So Germany flips to hard. Global war on terror goes to zero and we get a prestige. So maybe that's what I need to start doing for prestige. I was trying to shift some of these hard countries or soft countries over to hard. All right, did I do... Why does it seem like... Why do I have... Oh, never mind. I had an odd number of cards. I was thinking I didn't... I'm like, why do I have five cards in my hand? I'm used to having an even number of cards. So this is right. So I, I started out with nine. I've played two two phases. Getting old. Lose my mind. All right. Looks like that will be an op. Or a, uh, a plot. I don't know when we use... I have to find out when the jihadists will use the reserves. Can I use them now? Could I make that a two plot? Let me find out. All right. So I looked up the jihadi reserves and they get added to a card whenever and the reserves also don't disappear at the end of the turn i i don't know if i totally agree with that i mean they, they have the advantages of everything so and i get it right it's like we're 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 talking about you know the ability of um jihadist cells to kind of operate pretty freely right they're not constrained by the rules of government right so they can do a lot more but I don't know. You know, they've already got enough advantages. Am I going to stick with that? I don't know. But I'm I'm going to add the reserves to this. So this will be a two op, or it's a two op. We're going to end up plotting. Um, and the plot has been the plots have been in the Philippines. So we're just going to leave them continue to to do plots in the Philippines. All right, two plots in the Philippines. So there you go. You can see them right there. We need two or lower. Didn't happen. Do we have WMDs? Nope. Well, the moment one of them doesn't get blocked will be the moment that <laughs> it's a WMD. I think that was the first card. Yep, that was their first card. Prism. Data mining helps GWAT effort. Activate half of all sleeper cells on the map or alert all plots on the map. Ooh, that would have been a good one if it was in my hands. Of course, it was not in my hands. So that'll be three more plots in the Philippines. In fact, let's just, rather than pull them out of the cup like I have been doing, let's just, let's just roll three times and then pull out of the cup from there. So one plot is successful. All right, there we go. There's our one plot. Hopefully, I'll remember to to resolve that plot. So we need three to do that. Well, I still think that's total garbage for one. I'm going to go to my grave saying that that is a terrible for one up. Well, I have one in the reserves, so I can either use that card or that card. 
I think I'll play this one just on the off chance that somehow the jihadis managed to get a cell into Libya or Iraq, which they will do because they're good at that. So I'm going to use that and my reserve to disrupt this three plot, which was, look at that, that was a WMD. So that goes to, if I'm not mistaken, any uncovered plots um, don't go back to the plot cup until um, the end of the turn. So I'm not putting that back in the cup. All right, so for my next action, I'm that card's getting thrown away. So the jihadis have one more card. I have four more. So basically this will give me a two-card advantage. It would have given me a three-card, but that ugh, that's awful. I just I can't I can't do it right now. Can't do it. So what I'm going to do. I can't play any of They all have to be played for ops. So, let's play you. Where You're going to go to the reserves. And that was my second card. And now it is the jihadis trying to have one card left. What is it? UN ceasefire. Let's see. International peace efforts succeed. Play in a civil war country. End of the civil war. This is a playable event. Let's see if let's see if that card actually gets played. All right, so 233, UN ceasefire, highest sales minus militia, priority to ally, then neutral. All right, so what are we doing here? We're play in a civil war country, end the civil war. Replace all militia and sales with an equal number of awakening and reaction markers, troops to track, set alignment to neutral, and all right, that's a lot there. There's only two civil war countries, so we don't really have to do anything. I think I might want to do that in Iraq. All right, what's the priority? Highest cells minus militia. Well, there's neither one of them has cells. Priority goes to ally and then neutral. Well, set alignment to neutral and rule governance. I'm going to do that in Libya because I am not sacrificing that governance right there, even though I would love... Actually, you know what? It goes there. So even if it goes to... Well, no, that's kind of tough. So I'm gaining a step but losing a step. So either way... Um... I think I'm still going to do this. Place all militia with cells. Or place all militia and cells with an equal number of awakening. Actually, you know what? That might be better in Libya because I would get um, three awakening tokens there. Troops go to track, so Operation Serval would end. I, yeah, I'm going to do this in Libya. So let's do that. I think that's going to be my better thing because I'm going to get the awakening tokens and then this will flip to a good governance all by itself, just like what happened in Syria, but the opposite. Replace all militia and cells with an equal number of awakening and reaction tokens. So there's three. So let's do some awakening. The Civil War is over. Unfortunately, Operation Serval goes away, but it was basically that's a, that was a free troop. Um, I think I put that in the wrong cup. Uh, let's see what else happens. Um, did that troops attract set alignment to neutral? Boom. 
and roll governance. So basically, I've got nothing to lose because it's already at poor, so I can only increase the governance. So I need to roll a five or six, roll low. Boom, man, things are looking up. So that means it goes to fair. Yep, don't want that one. This is good. Other markers remain. Um, actually, so operations servo would probably stay there, but I don't need them. It's, it was... I'm pretty sure it gets removed just because things have improved in Libya. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. An operation servo marker it was one troop. I, it's not like I could move it to anywhere else on the map. So that's what's done is done. All right. So that event was actually good for me. And then, so the only thing that happened is that event gets played. And then I added the reserves to the Jihadi Ops track, which they don't have any cards to play. So now... It is just my turn. And then what's going to happen here, so when we do convergence at the end of the turn, so this will eventually go to ally, and then it will flip to good. So it's going to take two more turns, but that is a good thing. And then this will affect, I'll be able to use the, this is, uh Finally, something good has happened. So no plots, so I can easily get rid of that piece of garbage right there. I have two reserves. And I have two cards, so I can do three, well, no, three. I can do two three-op things. What do I want to do? That's the thing. All right, let's try. I'm going to try to get Libya good. Because if I can get them to good, I think the awakening thing at the end of the turn will shift them to ally. So that will be, then I'll be done with Libya. Although, yeah, I think I'm going to do that because it's going to be easier there because we got this minus two, which cancels out there. Yeah, so I'm going to do that in Libya. So I'm going to, um, I'll use this. I can't use it for anything else. So I'm going to use my two ops. Um, so that's plus three. Minus one to shift to good. So that is two. And then minus one for war of ideas. So I get a plus one to the die roll. So let's see what happens in Libya. Plus one to the, on, a, on a war of ideas. So that is a three. That's not good enough to do anything. And then with my second turn... I'm going to play that. I'm going to do the same thing again. Roll low, roll low. Plus one, and I rolled low. So, two failures, yay. I mean, I've had some pretty decent successes, so I guess I can't complain. And then on my last card play, I'm going to throw that in the trash where it belongs because it's not a one-op value card. That's a two-op easily. And then that is it. So what's going to happen is Convergence will either move the governance or the um, alignment, I believe. But I'm going to do all that off camera. I always do that off camera. So, folks, that was turn number 13 of the Global War, or excuse me, the Global War on Terror. Labyrinth, The Awakening. Thanks for watching.